everybody, this is Ray and Rascal in the Voodoo Garden. I am going to go over all 20 tomato plants. Yes, all 20 tomato plants. And oh gosh, I just got sun in my eyes. Well, it was nice seeing you. <laughs> all I see is red now. Um, that was fun. Take a piece of paper and write down the names of all of these tomatoes and make notes of your own. That way you can decide, well, maybe I do want to grow this one. Maybe I don't want to grow this one because I'm going to be sending out seeds in January for the free seed giveaway. But I may not have enough seeds to send everybody all of the varieties. So I may limit each person to maybe just a few varieties. So, oh gosh, there went another one. I'm going to get hit. <laughs> There's a squirrel up there and he's throwing down walnuts at me because apparently he doesn't want me here. Well, that's just too darn bad because I happen to own that tree. But anyway, aside from the murderous squirrel I got up there, um, make a note of which varieties you may want. Like say if you're going to get like three or six varieties, try to make a note of which ones you would want the most. That way when it comes time for me to give out seeds, you can decide, well, maybe I don't want this one. If I'm limited, maybe I don't want these ones. So keep some notes going on throughout the growing season. I'm going to show you growing structure, strength, variety, leaves, fruit production from start to finish. That way you can get a good idea of what this plant's going to do for you when you grow out in your garden. Okay, let's get going on the whatever it is we're going to do. Let's go up This front. is the Ludicente tomato. I have two generally per pot. Some of them I only have one because one of them died or it was very weak. So I wanted to limit it to just one good strong plant. But this one had two good ones. And let's zoom in a little bit and I'll review it. As far as growth pattern, it's a standard upright growth. It does have some suckers that come on, but not really that strong. Some plants will have stronger suckers. Some will have really weak ones. This one tends to have weak suckers in favor of a strong central stem. And so if you're growing your plants upright and you're keeping them in cages or tying them to a post, this is a good one, I think. It's a nice, strong, solid, straight stem. Now the the branches with the leaves tend to be long and curved down. So it may give the appearance of being a little bit wilty. So be careful when you water this thing. It's not unwatered. It's just a little bit uh, weeping willow-like, I guess. And that's okay. Generally, that's how Roma tomatoes grow. If you've ever seen a Roma tomato, they have the long swooping stems that go down like this. That's just how they grow. Runner-up number two is Polish Paste. Polish Paste had two in there and I had to take one out because it just wasn't looking that good. Let me bring you in close and show you what I think of this. This is an odd looking plant. I think you're going to like it though. One of the first things that I noticed about this plant is it really does like to sucker. Holy cow, this thing is just nuts. It started them from the bottom and worked its way up. Now keep in mind, I have not pruned these tomatoes at all. This is the natural growth. You're going to see it from start to finish. Sometimes there may be excess suckers and I don't want them going all over my lawn, so I'll take them off. But for the most part, I want you to see what this plant looks like so that you can make a judgment for yourself. The new stems that come out, the new suckers that come out, they tend to have smaller leaves and it almost looks like they're getting eaten by bugs, but they're not. That's just how they look. They come out with the smaller leaves and then eventually they get larger but they grow a lot of suckers. One, two, three, four. It's just going nuts out here. Now with the central leader, the main stem, it is nice and strong and straight. That's a good thing. So I'm kind of impressed with that. It does tend to put out very strong, medium-sized branches. It has a good growth pattern. It's very self-supporting. I like that. And it doesn't really hold on to this stick very much. So it's very self-supporting and it has a lot of suckers. So if you're ever going to plant your tomato with what everybody calls the praxis myth and bury it deep, this one is going to be a good contender because it has a lot of suckers that come out and they seem to have a lot of strength. So when you bury it deep, it's going to have multiple plants coming out and that is going to give a lot better production for your plant. Runner up number three is a good looking variety. This is called the Italian tomato tree. And uh, I'm assuming it's not going to be a real tree, but let's go in and take a look at what we have. All right. The Italian tomato tree is a potato leaf, which means it doesn't have a lot of, you know, jagged edges on the leaves. It's just a potato leaf. That means absolutely nothing. 
Okay, it, ten it tends to have more of a zigzag pattern to the stem. Not very strong. It kind of like a medium, not as strong as the other ones on the central leader, but it's okay. Uh, it's supported by the stick. It has suckers, but the suckers are extremely delicate, which means you're not going to have a whole lot of problems with the suckers getting in your way. I guess that's a good thing. It has flowers forming on the top early, and that looks pretty good so far. You know, I don't know what ate these leaves. You'd normally think that this would be a tomato worm, but I didn't find any tomato worm on it. So I don't know what it is. I was thinking it might have been a rabbit or something, but something munched this thing down to nothing but a stick with a couple leaves. I thought it was toast, but it's coming back. This one is called the Black Zebra Cherry, and it is coming back like you would not believe. Two plants right here, because one of them was growing right here, one of them was growing over here. This one got yanked out and ate. This one got munched all the way down, but another one popped up right over down here. I don't know if it's the same plant or a new plant. It does come back extremely fast. It has, from what I can see of this miniature thing, it has good suckering towards the bottom. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. You make the notes. It definitely is gonna be a sucker heavy plant. From what I can see, it has nice structure. It grows fast. And it's a good it's a good one. I mean, come on, any plant that gets chewed down to a nub and comes back with a Siamese twin over here, I think that's a good contender. Oh, this is a nice one. This is called Speckled Roma. And it looks really good. <laughs> Where to start with this monster? Um, first of all, it does have a lot of suckers. It's basically <laughs> all sucker. I'm trying to find the central leader on this. The central leader tends to be about medium, not too thick. It focuses a lot of energy on suckering from the bottom, from the middle, everywhere. This is going to be a very sucker heavy plant. Now it has the long swooping branches that come down like this and it gives it a very graceful look, but don't be fooled. This does not mean that it's going to be a weak plant. It is actually very vigorous. It may not be that thick, but what it lacks in thickness, it's definitely making up for in suckers. And me, I tend to like the plants that sucker a lot because I like to plant them deep and I like to have multiple heads growing out of my plants. You may not like that, but I want to mention that for anybody that likes suckers coming out of their plants, this one is actually going to be a good contender. But if you want one tall, straight, thick plant, this may not be the one. But it is the speckled Roma, and Romas do tend to have that habit of having the long, swoopy leaves, a little bit delicate, but when they start producing, <laughs> they start producing. And this one is putting out flowers all over the place. That is actually a bonus. I think that's great. This one's going to be producing quite well. I have a feeling this is going to be a good producer, so make a note of that. By the way, now this one is showing me a lot, and I am extremely impressed with this. Make a note of this. This is a strong plant. Look, I didn't even have to tie this one to the sticks. Every single one I've tied to the sticks, this one, it just decided, I don't need no freaking stick. It is a strong, sturdy, stocky, beautiful plant. The branches come right up. They don't swoop down. They don't go across or anything. They go straight up to the sky. They are self-supporting. Oh my gosh, you could crawl on this plant. It's amazing. That is amazing. The leaves are a nice, dark, dark, dark green. That's beautiful. It's setting flowers as it goes. It is going to have some good production. This is going to be a very solid, beautiful plant. This is the Mung, M-O-N-G. I like this plant. I want to bring you in a little bit closer because I want to show you some of the things that I like about the inside of this plant. You know, this is a little bit different from the other ones. This is kind of a blend. It's not quite the sturdy, stocky, strong one, but it's not quite the swoopy, delicate, weeping willow of the others. It's kind of a blend of both. It has suckering that's forming bottom, middle, and even top. It suckers all the way up, and it suckers quite a bit, but uh, the ones that normally suck are generally are a little bit more delicate because it takes some of the energy away from the main stem, puts it into the suckers. Doesn't mean it takes energy from the plant, it just kind of distributes it into different parts of the plant. This one tends to have a very nice looking center, even though it is suckering, and it has nice strong branches. This shows me that it might possibly be good for heavy yields. Not quite sure, I've never grown this before. The flowers 
look nice. Good sized flowers. I got a feeling this is going to have some decent sized fruit on it. Make a note of this. It's going to have medium sized clusters of decent sized fruit. It's a good healthy plant. It's almost self supporting here. I like the look of this so far. This one is called the furry red boar and this one has something special going on down at the bottom. Take a look. Look at this. It has suckering right from the very start. It didn't wait until the plant started growing at all. It suckered right from the base and that is amazing. I've never seen a plant sucker so much and so hard as this one. It has a huge sucker which actually rivals the main stem and that's pretty rare. And then it has another one over here and another one over here and another one over there. What's different about this is it's kind of uniform. Sucker left, sucker right, sucker back, sucker forward. It is amazing what this thing can do with suckering and still remain strong, sturdy, self-supporting. It's a beautiful plant, I gotta admit. This plant is something else. If the fruit on this is good, I might have to try this myself and plant it deep and get a multi-headed plant out of it. All right, number nine on the lineup is Amazon Black. Amazon Black, hmm, I don't see anything black about it, but <laughs> let's get a little closer and see what we can find that's good about this plant. Amazon Black, it has good strong suckers, which I like, you may not like, but I do. And I got a feeling since the center part is so thick that if you were to limit the suckers on this, this would be one heck of a thick, strong, upright plant. So those of you who like to grow your plants upright or in cages, you might want to take a note of this. Now, by the way, when you see the results on these plants so far, keep in mind they've had the exact same amount of water. I don't water them differently. When I water one, I water all of them. I water them all the same. They all get the same amount of sun, the same exact soil. Everything is identical. So everything that you see here is all plant, not from care. Number 10, I had to back up for this one. This is called Red Pear. Now the vintage wine is off the roster. Go ahead and mark that one off if you wanted the vintage wine. That didn't make it, it just died and it was a very weak plant. I really wasn't too thrilled about it. But I replaced it with seeds sent to me by another viewer and this is called Red Pear. I am actually really liking this. I gotta admit, if I had to have a favorite so far, this is the one. Take a look up close and see what's growing inside. <laughs> this is a beauty, an absolute beauty. Look at this little pear-shaped tomatoes. There are clusters all over this plant. There's one down here, there's one here. I can't even move the camera enough to show you. This is two plants growing in one pot. Oh wait, whoa, 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 bonus. Take a look at this. I thought this was two plants growing in here. Get this, it's one plant. This monster being held up by two stakes that's taller than any of the other plants. This is only one plant growing in here. Holy Moses. All of this is from suckers. It has hardly any central leader at all in this plant whatsoever. And I don't believe I chopped this one back. Usually I prune my plants back and force the suckers. Guess what? I didn't do that to this. It is 100% sucker. And that's actually not a bad thing because it's like having five plants growing in one pot. This is one plant and it is loaded with tomatoes. That is insane. I have not seen this in a plant ever. So I'm very impressed with this red pear. Make a note of this if you want high production, beautiful tomatoes and a beautiful plant. Red pear, you're gonna want seeds from this. One thing I wanna to bring to your attention is that you're gonna notice the next 10 are larger than the first 10. That's because the second 10 are filmed in the backyard. The backyard gets a little bit more sun than the front, but I didn't have room to put them all back here. So keep that in mind when you're making your decisions, making your notes. These aren't necessarily healthier, they just get more sun. So I'm sure that the first 10 would be every bit as big as these if they had this amount of sun. Okay, with that in mind, let's get on with number 11. This is the white ox heart. And this one has some definite pluses to it. To start off with, one thing that I found really nice about this, for people who like to grow upright plants, I have found relatively no suckering hardly any suckering at all. And the suckers that it has are just anemic looking little things. Now with the white ox heart, it's gonna produce uh, ox heart tomatoes like the pink ox heart, only they're supposed to be white or creamish color, 
which I think uh, for tomato growers that want to grow something really strange, that is going to be different. I just can't even imagine a white tomato. I mean, what kind of tomato sauce would that make? This is going to be very original and very fun to grow. Next one up is a yellow striped boar. This is a beauty. It really is. Take a look up close and see what it's doing. Two plants in it. It has decent suckering, which you may or may not like, but it does have some nice, sturdy, horizontal leaf growth. I think that's actually kind of pretty in a tomato. I mean, a lot of them will swoop down and yeah, that's nice, but you know, every now and then you get one that looks like this and it just gives you the feeling that this plant is happy, healthy, it's just gonna go nuts. It is putting out quite a few flowers for such small plants, but it's still putting out suckers with flowers. That's really kind of odd. Usually like when they put out suckers, the suckers go nuts for a while. No, this one put out suckers and flowers on all the suckers and flowers at the top. You know, some of these I just have to back up a little bit more because they're so wide or so tall. And this is one of them. This is the, oh boy, here we go, Marazol Magic. And this is a really nice plant. It's got a nice green look to it. It's tall, it's sturdy, and of course we're gonna zoom in. Of course I'm gonna zoom in. I, no I noticed that the suckering starts at the top half of the plant and then it really gets strong. But at the bottom, very weak suckering. I don't know why that is or if that's a good thing, bad thing. <laughs> Who knows? But one of the nice things, as it grows, I don't know if the camera's up high enough, but it's already starting to produce fruit. Not just flowers, we're talking fruit here. And that is something that's really kind of cool. I mean, whereas the other ones are starting to produce flowers, they're doing okay, this one grows, suckers, and produces fruit. So that's actually showing me something nice. And one of the nice things about this, the leaf stems are not really long and crazy and getting out of control. They're short, they're stocky. That's kind of nice because you don't have to like clip off all these extra branches to keep the blight down. This is gonna be really nice for people that are concerned about blight. When you have short stocky stems, you don't have to worry about them covering up the soil and going way down there. Kind of cool. Whoa. There is just no way to get this whole thing in frame. <laughs> Number 14 is the Ananas Noir. And uh, and my gardener's growing one of these, and he really likes it as well. I gotta admit, I'm liking this plant. It has a lot of pluses and very few minuses to it. Take a look. We'll start off at the top and work our way down. It has cluster, 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 and that is something that I don't see too often in my tomatoes. You usually see a cluster, it grows a while, another cluster. This one has multiple clusters all grouped together. That is something else. Now, from what I understand, this puts out decent sized tomatoes. This is going to be a little strange here. This is going to be this huge ball of tomatoes. That could be a good thing, but also it could be a bad thing. Think about it. If this puts out really large tomatoes, do you really want huge amounts of tomatoes all grouped together in one area? That could put a lot of strain on your stem. So if I were growing this for my own personal use, I might pinch off one of these or limit it to just a couple tomatoes per cluster. That way it distributes the weight. But let me back it up and show you the bottom of the plant. It's stocky, it's straight, it's strong, it puts out decent clusters of big tomatoes from what I understand. Nice dark green color. If you like dark green plants that look really healthy, this one is definitely going to be a contender. Make a note of that. This one's called Siberian and I've grown a tomato before that was called Siberia. So I don't know if this is the same tomato or not, but if it is, I gotta tell you, I like the taste of Siberia's, I really did. And I didn't save the seeds, which I wish I would have. So if this is the same thing, I might be growing this again myself because it's a darn good tasting tomato. I don't know if this is the same. It has a decent stem, nothing special, not super strong, not super weak. It has average suckering down here that starts way at the base, which I like, some people don't, I do. Um, let's see, it has flower clusters, it's already starting to form a real teeny tiny tomato up here. It has nice dark green foliage, a little bit sparse, you know, between the leaf things here. Lets a little air come through. It's a decent sized plant. I'd say it's about average for all the ones I'm growing so far. Next one up on the list is the German Mennonite. German Mennonite, hmm, I kind of like this. Let's move in close and take a look and see what we can find. German Mennonite has a nice strong upright growth short stocky branches. I really like that. And 
it has really strong suckers. Not profuse, I mean it has an average amount of suckers, but they have a lot of strength to them and I like that because that means it's going to be a good solid plant for production. If you have these wispy looking suckers, they're really not going to be able to hold a lot of fruit. They're going to be falling all over or you're going to be tying them up. When you have a good strong sucker like this so soon in such a small plant, that means that this is going to be able to hold some fruit and I like that. And it doesn't focus so much on these long swooping branches. It does what it needs to do with the branches and gets on with the growth pattern. Very nice. It has flowers up at the top. No fruit yet. Whoops. It's going to have some fruit and one of them looks like a super bloom. So we're going to have a decent sized tomato to start off the season. Not bad for the first bloom, but it does have other ones. But the oldest bloom is a super bloom, which means it's just a big fused large flower that looks like a mutant weird strange thing. Those are kind of cool to have turn into tomatoes because you never know what you're going to get. You might get this really strange odd looking tomato. It might be monstrous. You never know. It's kind of like a prize. Now the next one up on the list is the Rose Quartz Multiflora. This is the one that's supposed to grow clusters of up to 150 tomatoes. Well I got to tell you I don't see any clusters of 150 not even close. It has clusters of like maybe three or four. So I don't know if the seeds got mixed up or what happened. This does not look like a plant that's going to put out monstrous clusters of tomatoes. But I did notice a lot of stuff I do like about this plant, no matter if it's the right one or the wrong one in the seed packet. This is a beautiful plant. Okay. To start out with, this is a beautiful plant. Dark green leaves, beautiful shape, nice cuts on the leaves. I think it's an absolute beauty. And also the stems that hold the leaves are extremely strong. My gosh, that is beautiful. It has suckering from the bottom, but that's okay. You know me, I like the suckers. And they are nice strong suckers and they're growing extremely fast. Very profuse on the suckers. Make a note of that. Good suckering on it. It's going to be one that you really definitely want to bury deep to get the most strength out of it because right at the base here, look at that. It's putting out roots all the way up to the surface. This one would do very well to bury deep and get extra roots off the stem. Geez, I better put something on top of these roots. That's probably why it's growing so well. It has a very good root system going on. And a good root system means a good plant. If you don't have good roots, you're not going to have a great plant. So if you like a good strong plant, no matter what this ends up producing, make a note of this. This is one of the strongest plants I'm growing right now. This is a yellow version of the Rose Quartz Multiflora. This is called the Yellow Multiflora. And let me take you in at the top and show you what a multiflora is supposed to look like. Look at this. This is all one cluster of flowers. Holy Moses. It's got them all the way back here. That is going to be huge. And this one is supposed to have clusters up to 200. Of course, most of them probably aren't going to be that. That's probably like the record that they ever got. I'm saying this is going to have at least 25 to 30 per cluster. And of course, it's going to have multiple clusters. This is going to be a high yielding, extremely productive plant. Oh gosh. And it is a cherry tomato. But then again, there's going to be a lot of cherry tomatoes on here. Let's back it up, go down and take a look at the base of this. You know, one of the things that I like about tomato plants and I look for in a tomato plant is a strong plant. I don't have time for wimpy plants that need a lot of doctoring and a lot of care because I have other things to do. I want a good strong plant that produces good, good solid fruit and it tastes good. I mean, <laughs> basically I want it all. And this plant is doing really well. Look at this. It is self-supporting. It's not tied to anything. It's going to put out a ton of fruit. It has super suckering going on from the bottom super strong suckering at that. So you take the benefits of a strong plant, extra suckering, extra large yields on each cluster. I can just imagine, actually I can't even imagine, this plant is going to have so many tomatoes on it, it's going to be nuts. I think I'm going to be giving away a lot of seeds from this plant. The, the tomatoes are going to be yellow, which you know I don't normally care for, but then again eh, it's just a color. But it is an extremely strong plant. It's going to produce like crazy. If you are limited in your space, if you want to grow this in one bush, you know, this is two plants. If you only want to grow one plant in one bush and have maximum yields of tomatoes, make a note of this. The yellow multiflora is going to probably be the one that you want to try. Number 19 on our list. This is the 
Oh, this is the one that I can't ever get right. Arjus Ni Watermelon. <laughs> I might have to put a subtitle on this one. Ars Dunye Watermelon. But as hard as it is to pronounce, it is so easy to grow. It is a beautiful plant. There are a lot of good things going on. And the first thing I want to show you, this one is going to be a really good producer. I don't know if it's going to have smaller tomatoes or large tomatoes. All I know is this is a very young plant. It's very strong. It branches beautifully. It has suckers. It has strength. It has dark green. It has short stocky stems and it has production as it goes. Basically, it has it all. This plant is amazing. Take a look at the bottom. This is remarkable, absolutely remarkable. Extra strong stem. I mean, normally you only see strong stems on like this from a hybrid. And this is an heirloom. This is a beauty. Nice strong stem. Good suckering, but the suckering does not overwhelm the plant. It's actually like a, an accentuation of the plant. It isn't taking anything at all away from the main stem because the main stem already has fruit. It's doing its own thing and it's still able to produce some suckering at the bottom, which gives it a, not a, a lot of nice bush, which is really cool. It's not just one tall, long, thin plant going up. It's going to have some good stuff going on down here, great stuff in the middle, and then just keep on going to the top. The branches, not too long, not a lot of waste on putting out extra leaves. That's good too. Some plants will put out a lot of leaves and a lot of long branches, and that's really not that necessary. This plant gets right down to business, and I like that. I like that a lot. Boy, I hope these taste good because I really like growing this plant. Okay, the last plant on the lineup is actually very nice. This is called Armenian, and Armenian has really nice color beautiful leaves. I actually prefer the lobed leaves better than potato leaves. I don't know why. It's just a personal preference of mine. I like the look of this. It has average long branches. It has a nice sturdy structure. There's two plants in here and they're not being tied to anything. It's an extremely strong plant. Good flowering so far. It's going to have nice production and a strong enough plant to hold those tomatoes. You know, it's nice to get a lot of production off your plants. Everybody wants a lot of production. But if you have a weak stem, what good is it? You have to tie that thing up like this spaghetti noodle going up a vine, and you're just hoping to heck it doesn't snap, it doesn't break, the neighbors don't see what a spindly looking plant you have. This is a beautiful plant. This is a beautiful, strong, healthy plant. It has good suckering at the bottom, good strength at the bottom, nice flowering. I like it. Armenian is a beautiful plant. I hope this thing produces really well. I like it. All right, I'm going to get going right now, but I will do periodic updates on these tomato varieties, but I'm not going to do them every episode. I'm going to wait a while, and when something new comes along, I'm going to update them some more so that you can get a little bit more information. So all the notes that you made, set them aside, and keep tuned into the Voodoo Garden. That way you can keep track of the tomatoes as they grow. Rascal and I got to get going. It's been fun having you in the Voodoo Garden. I really do appreciate it. This is Ray. I am out of here. Bye. Ah, those were my glasses. Whoops. Rascal. Let's go.